Okay, so let's just take a quick look at Maya's display menu. At the top here, we have a grid uh, setting. This is a grid for uh, global, uh, basically, uh, this is a global setting. This will affect any viewport with a grid in it. Uh, we've also got the settings, the specific settings for this grid here in the option box. Um, there is also a, a grid setting within the show menu of the panel, of each panel, just simply to toggle them on and off. Um, the reason I bring that up is so that if we jump into Blender, we can see um, in the property sidebar here, we do have um, an area uh, down here under, um, I appear to have lost it, it's just ah, under display. And um, we can turn on and off the grid there. Uh, and we can turn off the axes as well. So that's basically turning off the grid, but you'll notice that um, this is a per 3D view um, uh, setting, set of settings. Uh, so if we were to change these settings, we can actually have different visualizations of grids in different uh, panels. So if I just left click the very corner of this screen to create a new and then drag out, um, and then we can see another grid here. Let's just close that as well. Um, what we can do is we can change, turn the grid off here and it turns off, but it, it's still maintained there. We can uh, increase the lines, we can change the scale, uh, and you can see none of that is having any effect to the uh, adjacent window here with its grid setting. So um, that can be quite handy in, in uh, certain circumstances that we can set the grid differently in each view. Um, something else to note about this though, if we just toggle the quad view, um, we can turn off the grid, but you may be able to tell, I'm not sure whether it will render very well on these uh, on, the, on this video or not, but we can still see the grid in the orthographic views. Uh, the only way that I'm aware of to switch it off, um, despite us actually being able to turn off the grid in the perspective view, sorry, this is very small, let me just shift space to maximize that view. Uh, we can see that the grid has been turned off in the perspective view, um, as we can see there. Um, <clears throat> If we just turn that off, we can see that it isn't being turned off on these orth orthogonal viewports, um, these various two-dimensional views. Um, the only way to be able to do this that I'm aware of is just to switch on only render, and then we can basically, we're going to lose some other details as well, but uh, at least we're getting rid of the grid if that's what we really need at that particular time. Uh, there's nothing obviously stopping us still um, manipulating the object and, and doing whatever we need to do with it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm just going to press shift space to just reduce that down again. Um, and then also we just look at the one viewport again, and then we'll toggle the, the, the quad view and then take that off only render just to kind of bring us back to our typical default settings. Um, the next thing in the menu, in the display menu, is the heads up display. Uh, this is this information that we can see here, verts, edges, faces, and so on. Uh, in Blender, what we can do here is it's actually on by default. So we can just look up here to the top right and we can see we've got eight verts, six faces, uh, one out of three objects. Let's just create another mesh object by duplicating that one with Shift D. We can see now we have 12 faces, 16 verts and so on. Um, and just one object selected. If we select both objects, we can see that rises to two. We've just got one lamp in the scene and none of them are selected right now. And this is how much memory is currently in use for this scene. Um, as soon as we tab into edit mode, we get a different readout at the top. This is now information specific to this one particular cube. So we have four edges selected out of possible 12, uh, one face out of six that translates to. There's a total of 12 tries in here. Um, and uh, that's basically where we would look for the equivalent of this heads up display. We've also got these UI elements here. This is essentially just turning on and off the windows that we can see uh, make up the user interface. Um, We've uh, probably already covered this in other areas, but quickly we can move around our user interface by clicking and dragging at the borders of the windows. We can also alter what's in those windows by just left clicking the icon that you can see at the far left of each header uh, and then choosing the particular window in here. We can also uh, duplicate or close windows by collapsing them into the adjacent window. So if we just create a window first, just by click left clicking at the top right corner of this uh, window here where the diagonal lines are and left drag dragging away from the other windows, uh, we can see we get this uh, additional copied window here. We can also then switch that to whatever we want, but we could also uh, left select and instead of creating a new window again, so there's now we've got three windows, we could just do the reverse order so we can left select and then move in the opposite direction and then just 
uh, collapse it back into that um, the previous view to just start to clean up the viewport so for example here we could now um, left click and drag up into here and then left click and drag to the, in fact we've had this window down here so we would first need to do that and then we would do that and then essentially it collapsed it into just one particular scene uh, however that isn't very helpful for many demonstrations so i'll just sort of use this composite in view to get us back to a very similar kind of an idea as we were and just flip that to the top the header to the top so this is just general um, ways in which we can manipulate our view in fact let's just get rid of that window and change that to a timeline that's basically us back to um, a kind of a default view if you like um, let's just zoom out a little bit in fact let's bring open the properties panel again so i'm just give this a bit more space um, okay so let's just move on we've got our hide and show here um, this is basically within the 3d views object menu we have show slash hide at the top here uh, this is these are reasonably similar uh, shortcut keys as well as we can see here with the h alt h and shift h they do slightly different things of course but we can see what they do there something else to note about this is that we can um, if i just press h to hide that object we can see the effects there alt h to bring it back and now what i can do is also tab into edit mode and then grab a few of these faces here and just press H to hide them as well. So we can do that at a sub object level and then press Alt H to bring them back. Um, so that's quite handy. Um, let's just move on. The wireframe color, uh, this is a great feature within Maya, but unfortunately it doesn't carry over into um, Blender very well as uh, we don't really have individual wireframe colors for each object. Uh, that's not really possible. Um, moving on we have then a selection of menus which are all um, kind of in the same area so we'll deal with all these in, in one fell swoop uh, in blender what where we can find this is in the properties sidebar there's an area called display which we're going to see here and also there's an area in the properties window uh, under the object tab of it there with the cube icon here we can see there's also uh, an area co called display so within these two areas we can find many of the features that you might find within those that air, that element those uh, that area sorry of the display menu in Maya uh, we have things like we can switch the wireframe on and off here uh, we can switch that to actually just display its wire on its own so we can have multiple shading types within the same view uh, which can be quite handy for very complicated scenes um, we also have uh, the options to turn things as x-ray or view it as a, a just a bounding box um, we've also got ways of just limiting it to just show the render as we touched on before uh, we can also show the origins of all objects um, and there's some other things that will allow you to uh, just discover on your own there or, uh, or simply just read this list it's obviously quite self-explanatory in many ways um, something that's uh, worth noting is that we can turn back face culling on uh, in the shading area so if we just switch back face culling on here and uh, f uh, in fact let's just go and um, shift f uh, sorry not shift f just press Control f to bring up the faces menu and then what we can do is we can flip the normal and then you can see nothing seems to have happened but if we turn on back face culling we can view that um, that has actually indeed flipped um, so that's reasonably uh, useful um, <clears throat> something else to note about this is that the selection if I just border select with the B key we can see that it's um, essentially selected all the faces that it can see um, but the behind faces haven't been selected because they're obscured by these front faces even though this one is back face cold um, because it kind of treats it like that so because we can't see the faces in the background they're not getting selected the only the, the way around that basically is to switch on this uh, or uncheck this limit selection to visible and now we can see this faint outline that we get of to indicate that that tool is on that feature is on and so um, we can left click again uh, with the border select by pressing B and then uh, we can see that everything gets selected one final note here is the shading um, it's pretty much uh, the best option to always have GLSL on in uh, most circumstances this is the best uh, way or at least the fastest way for um, Blender to render the um, scene out for us in this uh, 3D view here uh, we can also uh, it kind of works quite in, in tandem with the 
textured viewport shading mode uh, and will allow us to see normal maps and specular maps and things like that. Uh, there are other modes here which um, I believe are to do with uh, older game engine uh, display types um, but there are a certain a couple of features in here but um, it's not worth uh, just going through those just at the moment. Um, <clears throat> what we can do here is just pretty much just keep it on GLSL um, and switch between textures and solid in most circumstances. Um, that will allow us to um, have a decent idea of what the lighting information is doing and so on um, and also works much more hand in hand with uh, the, the, some of the settings within the materials. Um, just one last thing to do with the display really is the fact that uh, some of the um, many there isn't necessarily a display option for showing um, uh, procedural textures such as clouds and blends and so on uh, it pretty much just shows the image or movie uh, that is assigned to that object uh, but none of these uh, procedural textures will show up um, uh, but that should just pretty much um, cover the, uh, the equivalent of the display menu and uh, hopefully I've covered many of the things that you might be uh, used to trying to find in or digging around in this menu for and it's equivalent in Blender.